This is a Socialist News and Views special interview. I'm Nick Schillingford coming to you from the Urban Cabin Studios in South Minneapolis with this special interview <laughs> i really appreciate you being here on social uh on uh, socialist news and views we let folks introduce themselves do you want to just tell listeners and viewers who you are sure yeah so i'm anthony depiche i am a comrade from so-called philadelphia i uh work at the warehouse worker resource center and we help amazon workers in california fight for living wages and safety on the job I'm a digital organizer um, in large part with the Cocktails and Capitalism podcast. Um, and yeah, I'm grateful to be here. Thank you. Yeah, I, uh, you know, it's funny because the things you mentioned aren't even the things I was like thinking about you related to because you <laughs> do so many things. And that's kind of like where my next uh, question is coming. I know I've, you know, connected with you around like Cop City stuff and yeah. like some Starbucks worker stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you do a lot of like fundraising, connecting different yeah. activists in different parts of the country. Uh yeah. you interviewed you interviewed me on uh, proper villains yeah. uh, for yeah, thank uh, you. <laughs> indigenous nightmare network. So I guess right. you know boiling all that down and like focusing in on like kind of this moment, like what mm. what are you working on like right now? Like what is your what are your what are your big focuses and uh you know what are you what have you been doing right at the moment uh, lately, Anthony? There we go. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, we're all trying to mobilize around the hurricane that hit so-called Florida and to, you know, bring awareness to the um, prison that wasn't evacuated and just mm -hmm. all that, you know, are disabled elderly folks, just, you know, the most vulnerable people. And I think that, yeah. You know, you mentioned Cop City and and maybe it's a good note to start on that, like, you know, this is the plan. This is we've said it before and we'll mm -hmm. say it again, sadly. But like for the folks in charge, whether they're politicians or billionaires, this is their climate plan. This is the housing plan. Like they're just going to watch and like, you know, use the fucking cops to, you know, guard grocery stores or right. resources, you know, but they're just going to sort of it's a controlled demolition or whatever in a, in a fucked up kind of a way to say it, but it's like, they're just going to watch everything, you know, get so much worse for working people, especially BIPOC and, and disabled folks. And, um, and so, yeah, so what I'm doing is just trying to amplify, obviously um, the Palestinian, you know, genocide we're over a year into now. Right. And, and so, yeah, there's so many different things, but honestly, like you and I have talked about, um, you know, it's hard to, balance everything because we are trying to like you know um be good digital organizers but also show up in our communities also show up for the folks in our lives or that they're comrades or family friends whatever and like yep. um, yeah and then also kind of take care of ourselves you know ourselves like uh dr erica is a good example from the cocktails and capitalism show with like the illness that she's dealing with right now and her openness about it and and like yeah so so i don't know you know <laughs> I'm, I'm doing what i can I know you are too. And um, yeah, I'm grateful to be able to be in community uh, here now. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I just kind of a little bit uh, to the side too. Um, so Hurricane Helene was, you know, really devastating. I'm trying mm -hmm. to kind of figure out where things are at with Milton mm -hmm. right now, specifically, you know, like mm -hmm. you mentioned, the, um, uh, the prisoners that weren't evacuated. My impression so far is that uh, potentially... It's not as bad as expected, but I'm not sure, you know, that's just my own people that I know have marked themselves safe and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. And just the reports, I know that there was a, some people killed by a tornado, like right at the start, right when it was making landfall. And that appears to be the majority of the deaths that are getting reported so far. What are you hearing? What are you seeing specifically as far as Milton uh, after the Celine thing? Are you hearing uh stuff you know specifically from folks and from anything from prisoners or or their no, everything i i saw was in the 
you know, lead up and and was sort of, but it's like it's just they blur together because you fucking right. have, not in a negative way, you know, or dismissive, but rather the, like the climate crises obviously are only going to be exacerbating. And like, you know, what we saw in Atlanta, what we saw recently, um, yeah, throughout the South with these different ecological crises. Right. And then, you know, now this one. And so it's kind of been a nonstop, honestly, thing in terms of the circles that I'm in of mutual aid and of awareness and of calling out the people. I think I forget the fucking guy's name, but the owner of one of those companies, right, who like required his workers, just like Amazon did. Right. The Impact back. Plastics. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That yeah. fucking guy. And now he's fucking lying and saying that he told the workers to go. So, like, <laughs> right. you know, it's just so many levels. Like, these are good examples of how there's so many levels, right? to the struggle there's the level of like the mutual aid of the news of knowing what even happened of holding the people accountable who are profiting off of it or or you know right. causing most harm in the midst of it like the cops or the you know billionaires business owners and like yeah so there's just so many fucking facets and like yeah for for folks like you and i that are plugged into these things it can just be um nonstop and and obviously yeah it's important that we do it and support each other in doing it but yeah um that's as much as i am aware of specifically and like i'm grateful that you know there's folks like um what's left of the south uh podcast and rednecks rising and and other folks in um, the area even um comrade Kami i know is down there um volunteering and and raising awareness specifically about the milton um uh, situation and and so yeah i kind of defer to the folks that are doing the direct action, you know, and, and trying to amplify them and, and uplift them. But yeah, I don't have like, I didn't do enough uh, research and I appreciate your updates. Well, uh, I just wondered if, yeah, I just wondered if you had heard anything specific. I know it, it takes a while for this stuff to come out and obviously there's different things. There's flooding and there's, yeah. you know, you know, sometimes this stuff doesn't come out, you know, there could be somewhere that's flooded yeah. and, you know, we don't really have uh, a lot yeah. of uh, uh, insight into that yet. Sure. Um sure. But yeah, I mean, it seemed like they definitely were at least like sounding the alarm more before Milton because they realized that it was a complete failure with Helene. Mm -hmm. um, although they still weren't like providing people with the nece necessary things to actually evacuate, especially since huge areas of the Southeast were already devastated. And some yeah. people are like, where, yeah. you know, where do we even go if we were going to yeah. go, go somewhere, you know? So it's yeah. like, and like, these areas, you know, like this red state right in Florida, you have these conservative politicians who are literally, you know, saying that climate change is a hoax and right. and all this is, you know, a false emergency or whatever beforehand. And and like, yeah, I just think it's important as leftists that we not distance ourselves from our comrades in like so-called Texas and Florida and these very red states that right. like, you know, are dealing with some of the worst uh, ecological, you know, issues, but also are dealing with some of the worst conditions, period, because they are run by, you know, overtly fascist as opposed to, you know, subliminally uh, fascist folks who are openly at war with, you know, black and brown working people and and just, you know, totally embracing the, um, yeah, fascistic turn uh, here. And, and so, yeah, I, I don't know exactly but i think that like that is an important note to always talk about when these things happen um to comrades in the south um to remember that like they are not what liberal so to speak mainstream media conditions us to believe which is like write off or throw away right. kind of places but rather they are full of comrades queer bipoc you know indigenous all kinds of comrades that are doing the lord's work and have been so to speak forever and and that we need to support and build relationships with and amplify and so i think that that's a really key thing because it's easier for folks like us that are not actually hearing the wind and feeling the you know um crisis as much to be like oh well you know fuck those places where they, you know, don't care about these issues. They don't care about like, you know, not necessarily that you or I would do that per se. But, but people do that. A little, yeah. And we people might be a little that. less focused on them just sure. because we might have as many folks that we know or we that we're connecting with regularly and, and whatnot. And and so, yeah, like the Stop Cop City movement in particular, um, you know, in, in so-called Atlanta was really helpful for me with all of this because it gave me the opportunity to build relationships. And yeah, I feel like that's the key thing for me that I'm always going to be repeating, which is that like, you have to get 
past the digital stuff. It's not bad to right. do. Obviously, it's important, but you have to try to actually forge relationships with people and it's hard and it doesn't always mean that it will work out or whatever. Like, obviously, there's boundaries and whatever, but but you do need to try to actually, you know, um, connect with folks directly and and learn because that's how we protect ourselves from burnout because then we're not going to be in a position of saviorism, whether that's white saviorism or whatever, but like, we're going to be learning, we're going to be growing together. And that's, you know, there's a reciprocity, right. That makes it sustainable. That makes it enduring as opposed to, I'm just going to do these posts or I'm just going to do this show. And like, I know you're not doing that because we are evidence of that, you know, the fact that we've connected and, and maintain uh, this friendship and and so like yeah i think that through every crisis you know and especially again with the cop city thing you see how important it is to the point where the state criminalized people for doing like mutual aid or for you know these simple acts of right. kindness between strangers you know to support each other you know and and so it shows you just how fucking scared they are of real solidarity between working people um you know and and the lengths that they'll go and ironically you know, they would be more successful in their capitalist project if they were a little less openly at war with their own fucking people because people right. would be, well, things are okay, so maybe we don't need to have revolution. But the reality is they're pulling out all the fucking stops and, and you know, so we need each other more than ever. And that's not just, you know, financial mutual aid, though that's obviously very important, especially in the wake of devastation like this, but it's also, you know, being present, listening, you know, and, and kind of like, yeah, that relationship building work, that's not sexy. That's not generally, you know, getting all the videos and then the, you know, sort of right. trendy content in our circles, um, even. Yeah. Yeah. You're definitely, uh, yeah. I mean, I build relationships. You're definitely better at the uh, digital uh, piece of it. And I appreciate you out there uh, connecting all these struggles. <laughs> um, I was just going to say, um, you know, I'm here in Minnesota and Minneapolis and, you know, like you said, even if you're not there where the, you know, the wind is hitting you and the floodwaters are coming in. I mean, even before Helene and even before uh, Milton, uh, there's already lots of climate refugees coming to Minnesota, you know, uh, refugees that are trying to get away from anti-trans uh, 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 oppression and, and, and state and Missouri, violence, yeah. essentially. Mm -hmm. And also people trying to escape the affordability crisis because... Mm -hmm. Some of these mm -hmm. cities and stuff are just becoming like completely unaffordable for yeah. like average people. So there's all these different people coming to, to Minnesota. I've seen so many Florida license plates specifically mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. over the past, like just in the past year. Wow. Um, somebody said maybe some of that is like rental cars and stuff, but mm -hmm. it's been like a huge number. So I'm pretty sure that there's people and I know there's people that have said specifically they came from Texas yeah. Uh, yeah. to here to, to yeah. get away from different uh, things yeah. that they were dealing with that were really difficult. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so there's, uh, opportunities in your local community, uh, depending on where you are, um, you know, especially in the Midwest to, uh, to work with some of those folks to help people yeah. make, you know, make any transition that they're making, um, uh, you know, uh, efficient and, and not too difficult and make sure that they right. have the, some of the things that they need. So that's something mm -hmm. that folks should look mm -hmm. into as well. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you, um, I'm just curious. I, I'm going to go on another little tangent real quick, which is the, <laughs> the swoletariat uh, piece. I was just I was <laughs> going through your I was going through your links uh, for your uh, link tree before <laughs> I got on here, and I was like, okay, you know, I've really only heard that in in from one other comrade uh, in the past, you know. So I just want to like, yeah, what yes. is the swoletariat? What are uh, these? You know, what I are stumbled these? I stumbled onto it because of. Um, well, I don't know. It could be the hashtag. It could be that I just saw the hashtag and, and found it. But whatever it is, there's this meme that was like a fascist worked out today. Did you? Right. And I just loved it because like, you know, one of my we didn't plan on, you know, getting into this, but one of like the central crises of my journey has been like a body positivity or whatever kind of a thing, you know, like sure. parents are chiropractors. They're very like intense about like image and um. And yeah, so, you know, it it has not been a source of joy for me. And when I saw like leftist folks being able to, you know, use it in a way that was empowering and kind of framing it as a revolutionary or, you know, almost like um, the uh, the SRA, you know, Socialist Rifle Association kind of model of, of like community safety and, and supporting each other and just like reframing, you know, the traditionally fascist or, you know, um, carceral kind of narratives about like security and and whatnot but in a way that's like uplifting and nurturing and so 
Yeah. Um, now we have like a chat and there's like um, trans comrades. There's all kinds of folks that are, you know, um, sharing and we're just supporting each other. And like, yeah, so I kind of blended it, though, because it's like a obviously the links are music uh, mm. playlists. You know, and so it's I've got like a music. chat. So one thing I learned about since you gave me kudos, which I appreciate about my relationship building, one thing I'm learning and you've gone with me on this journey in one way or another is that like the more tight the Venn diagram can be <laughs> in the chat, the more successful it'll be. So sure. now I have like lots of little chats basically. So it's like, I have the solitaire yet, but I also have the music one. The mm. solitaire is the workout or like, you know, fitness pos positive sort of thing. But like, then there's also, yeah, the music one. And, and basically I just wanted to be like, we, you know, are using these systems that we know are oppressive, right? Spotify, Apple, whatever music. Um, if we listen to music, which a lot of folks do, right. and it, it just felt wrong to me knowing that like the top tier quote unquote artists are getting all the fucking money. Um, and like, so every time you play it, you're basically, you know, co-signing on that and, and just like, you know, um, subjugating our comrades. I want to say specifically, since we're talking about music, um, United Mi Musicians and Allied Workers, UMAW is fucking amazing. Follow them. I think it's like we are UMAW, whatever. But like, yeah, so I'm I'm building all these cool relationships is what I'm saying with folks around music, around, you know, fitness and whatever. And that's what the kind of solitariat thing boils down to. And um, and it's really fucking fun, you know, like um, adding things and whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there's a, it gets at another piece that you were mentioning with the Spotify and the Apple and stuff. I was actually just talking to my brother about this because uh -huh. um, I was talking about how much Apple supports the IDF. Uh, yeah. Uh, and the, but anyway, the the there's a, there's this constant like thing of like trying not to support the worst of the, um, uh, you know, capitalist uh, right. elite. But at the same yeah. time, like it's really difficult because you don't want to give up like uh you know this space or this institution and just like leave it to the fascists or leave it to right. the, like yeah. the worst people deserve, in society so it's really and hard boy and, yeah exactly <laughs> but like that's the beauty of it or that's the struggle is that like you know just like with anything because yeah so much of the conversations we have on a daily basis are about boycotts right or are about right. companies or they're using prison labor or they're using whatever and everybody right in our comments are saying the same thing, which is like, oh, great, another company or like, what can yeah, I do right. on the positive side? But it's like, I think we have to be supportive of each other. And you mentioned Apple, which I'm fucking excited about. We have to talk about um, Apple accountability movement mm -hmm. and like that, because it's just been explosive how exciting that shit is. But, um, but like, yeah, we need to support each other. And like, I'll tell you something awesome, which is when I started on TikTok, I just shared some like no tech for apartheid video of a protest. And, and it was about, you know, Project Nimbus, which is Google and Amazon's, you know, AI for Israel in their genocide. Um, and, and so many people, uh, Nicholas, were just commenting about like, okay, what can I do? What can I do? And like, people came up with alternatives, people, you know, were engaging, like thousands of, you know, engagements, whatever, people supporting each other, liking the things. And like, it was really fucking encouraging, because it was like, why can't that be the framework, as opposed to like, you know, just that kind of position that we don't want to be in you and right. i as the truth tellers and nobody wants to be in as poor working class people that have to say oh we can't have anything else no <laughs> right nothing. right right no shopping or can't do any. and so it's like why can't we like imagine and again that's like right. a cop city thing for me too because of like tortured gita like the idea that like we have a right to fucking dream and imagine something better and so it doesn't mean necessarily that we have to completely boycott everything today but right. it does mean and and you know what speaking of apple Tarek uh, Rauf, who is a comrade, who's the you know fired Apple worker, um, who's kind of leading the the charge with that. Um, they brought up about how you know the metaphor of like a relationship. They're like you know okay you know maybe you love Apple or whatever products and blah blah blah, but they're like it's a toxic relationship if you can't criticize anything or challenge anything gently about you know right. a partner or whatever that's unhealthy and right. on the other side it's like you know he, they didn't get into this but it's like you also don't have to completely walk away because think about with everybody organizing right what does everybody always the trolls in the comments say just quit just quit just quit and it's like no maybe like even if we don't go the leftist route maybe they love their fucking job or whatever they love the right, idea right. Of the company the service that provides some shit and it's like that's fine 
but then call out your fucking mm -hmm. boss and and build that you know solidarity so you can make it more of what's positive for folks because obviously we all fucking know whether you're even a fucking conservative you know that like your boss doesn't actually give a shit about anything that's you know noble about right. mission right they're they're just getting their bank but um but yeah i don't know i just think that like every opportunity that we can like slow down so to speak and love on each other and and explore and dream about what to do and what the issues are and whatever is key because in these social uh, media platforms where we're doing most of our engagement it's just so limited and yeah. everything's about like the one post or the one thing or whatever and we can't get into this kind of conversation together you know it's too right. hard and and in the comments, you know, the only people that are generally engaging are like the haters. Are the and, worst people, yeah. Yeah, and so it's like, and that's the left too, because like that's another fucking thing. It's like we need to, in general, be more uplifting of each other and whatnot. Like, you know, you're not going to agree. get the better world if by the end of it you've alienated everyone and you shit on everybody and you made them all feel like even if you got technically, you know, the the better system, nobody would fucking like be right. there enjoy it or whatever like you no know, it's true it's true just be wanting something different because of the that stuff but yeah so so i don't know there's a lot to all that but yeah my point is just that like when we're you know getting into these conversations around boycotting around the complicity you know aspect we need to try to get people excited so to speak about it because what happened with palestine right like for years for decades it was like well it's too complicated it's too much and mm. that was the main thing let's be real that was the main thing protecting israel was that it, culturally it was just sort of like oh this is too much and so it's like what the fuck if we dreamed and we were like oh let's make it accessible let's make it attractive let's make it welcoming to learn about and to get involved as opposed to like oh well you don't know all this stuff and you don't have exactly the right talking points and you whatever get the fuck out like or you're an idiot. <laughs> right right <laughs> like because that sounds just like a fucking zionist like like right. that's the same fucking you know shit so it's like i'm trying in my position which i've we've talked about a little bit as a reformed you know libertarian or christo fascist or whatever i'm trying to you know in whatever ways i can without you know um betraying comrades or whatever you know be present for folks that need to learn and need to you know um accept because it's like we are all complicit, obviously, whether it's through purchasing a product or just being American citizens or being white or being whatever. We have different degrees of it, but it's like people aren't going to learn if they're, and we know this with schooling, right? Around education, right. we talk about this all the time. People won't learn or kids won't learn if they're in an environment that's, you know, aggressive or hostile or whatever right. and like it doesn't mean there aren't hard truths and there is an accountability that needs to be had but it does fucking mean that if you're just straight up here to like vent and get out your rage or whatever then you're probably not the right person to start you know the, the right. uh, like a comrade imperfect activista on instagram told me um this quote from somebody else which was that like on the left we need more gatekeeper and more less gatekeepers less gatekeeper. and more ushers yeah and and people welcoming folks into the movement and so it's like not that there isn't stuff to be gatekeeped or there isn't security or you know right. sensitivity issues or, or identity politics that needs to be handled gently and and thoughtfully but just that it shouldn't be you know the opposite which is often is we've experienced that where it's like just hostile environments that are not going to really build the movements that we need because we're not going to see all the change overnight and like that's the other thing when we talk about unions and everything else it's like you know people say oh well you're just fighting for crumbs and and it doesn't really like matter or whatever in terms of the larger revolutionary goals and i get that right like that's like reform with abolition or whatever but the reality is that like Mutual aid exists for a reason. People need support right. along the way. And if we use unions as a vehicle to get people radicalized, to get them learning about, you know, class consciousness, then it's great. But we just, as the leaders, so to speak, or whatever, as people that are, you know, trying to, to be leaders, it's like, we need to have that larger vision, but not hit people coming in with everything right at right. the beginning but kind of gently bring them into the struggle because it's like the capitalists do that shit like they're not like you know right. hitting everybody with like the atrocities day one yeah, like right. they're great at like selling the vision and the mission and bringing people into you know a culture especially with like the police or the military where like it's only once you've been in for a while that you're starting to you know and once it's too late basically to to turn back that you're seeing the atrocities you're seeing the horrors and and that's intentional because they know that you know 
you're not going to go anywhere because they put in that foundation with you. They built that. So anyway, there's just so much this community building piece that I think is really important and under, um, you know, covered or whatever. And then, so that's why I right. had that opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think, you know, the, the, the best case scenario, like if you, um, you know, instead of, if you can't fully recreate a, you know, working class alternative to whatever the service is or whatever the product is, and you don't think you can successfully do a boycott, a boycott that's going to actually, you know, cause them some damage. I think, yeah. you know, the best case scenario is, you know, stay with the service and find a way to fuck with them. Or yeah. whatever. And that can be because with connect, connecting with the workers too, to find out like how, exactly. you, can, how you can best uh, Fucking you know, make, come at it, make it a cycle. pain in the ass for them. Yeah. And make yeah. It, uh, difficult for them. And so that's the key. That's one of the keys to, um, you know, to not giving up the space, but also not uh, completely, you know, and, and, and it's something we're going to learn more again, as we, Mm. you know, connect the, 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 the movements in the streets with the workers, mm. you know, behind the scenes and this stuff. And that's that starting to happen more. Um, but yeah, I mean, in the case where you can have a boycott and it can be successful and can, um, you know, cause some serious pain to these mm -hmm. uh, people that are playing a significant role. I mean, obviously that, you know, that's a great, uh, that can be a great strategy. Amen. Um, but again, you know, yeah, the, but that's super targeted. Space can be, Think about yeah, it. Exactly. The BDS it is like targeted, McDonald's, yeah. Starbucks, Disney, like yeah. maybe there's a couple more, but right. like, everybody and their moms posting like these giant ass lists of like every fucking company. And it's like, cool. If that's the way that you want <laughs> to do it, yeah, but mom, I don't think we great, do it. <laughs> but, like, but like, it shouldn't be everybody's job to like adhere to right. that kind of model when they should also be doing all this other shit we're talking about, which right. is delayed and they should be, you know, organizing. They should be like, so there's so many aspects to the work and, and like, yeah, I just don't want to lose people in the weeds or over minutia or right. whatever. Like I want to, you know, have a continuum or whatever. Like I keep saying, I want to yeah. have them be Moving growing people and, along. Yeah. Yeah. And learning and like, not, not giving up because they fucked up quote unquote, or they feel bad that they, you know, did whatever, because then the fucking enemy wins and that's their whole fucking goal anyway, is to just discourage, isolate, get us to that place where we're like, it's hopeless, right? Like that's right. the most common fucking thing because everybody's fucking overworked and underpaid. That's just a goddamn reality. Right. So we have time to do what we love, to be with the people we love. That's just like every single place you go on the planet. And that's not an accident because we saw during COVID, right? The danger of people actually having time at least to devote and energy to devote to, you know, uh, movement and organizing. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, yeah, we, we gotta, yeah, make it more um, attractive. And like, yeah, I think a perfect example of what you're talking about and what we're talking about, about hitting it from the different angles is this Apple accountability thing, because um, I've had the privilege with uh, Tarek Rauf, as I mentioned, and with, um, I don't know, uh, Saima Akhtar, <laughs> okay. uh, uh, um, who was a developer um, fired for speaking up about Palestine. They were both fired. Um, Tarek was fired from Apple for speaking up for Palestine. And, and so there was like this constellation speaking of chats, it was just like a workers for Palestine thing on Instagram. And it basically became more of like a tech worker thing. Okay. Um, you know, and, and like Tarek was a retail um, worker and, uh, you know, um, journalist of some kind for like Apple music as well. But anyway, so, um, but like, you know, Saima at Meta was, um, uh, you know, like above the line, quote unquote, developer, you know, sure. uh, whatever. But anyway, so this constellation emerged, we're having these conversations about, you know, tech workers, trying to speak up for Palestine, trying to, you know, um, organize in different ways. And, and, you know, we didn't really have a clear like outcome that was happening we weren't like devoting all this time and energy but like we'd meet occasionally and whatnot and then you know with the uh, on september 20th we had this global day of action over 12 cities around the world and there were all these protests that linked the struggles for a free congo and a free palestine because yes. apple was complicit in both of these genocides mm. and and we were like really just you know um encouraged and amazed because it wasn't even like a couple weeks prior we'd had all these you know pieces together in terms of the different orgs or you know chat members or whatever it just kind of like came together and so yeah that's exactly what you pointed out though about like the interior and exterior pressure so we're helping right. you know, the workers at these companies feel that agency and and there was a clear example because um united tech i don't know what it is it's like apple utaw is the instagram okay. But it's some kind of like retail um, organizing, you know, um, body in um, 
at Apple. Anyway, they were like sharing the stuff that we were um, putting out and, and um, you know, recently they had the um, US at least, um, Apple retail workers in so-called Towson, Maryland um, were successful in getting their first contract um, and organizing. And so like, yeah, being able to bring together the like organ, the labor organizing with the, um, you know, consumer sort of solidarity and, and protests and whatnot. And especially on like a global level, it scares the crap out of these fuckers. Like that's the thing I loved about the Starbucks workers United that got me into this stuff to begin with, because they just took all the social capital, like all the, you know, um, awareness that people have around the world of that right. brand. And they were like, Hey, all that <laughs> Impressive, you know, aesthetic, that fun, cool thing. They're they don't actually give a shit about that. And right. and all they had to do was like show themselves, you know, take pictures, videos, whatever, take action as as workers. And people around the world were compelled by that because they'd been lied to. And so right. there's just this interesting thing that's happening where like companies, and again, like Apple's just like that, that sell a progressive image oh, yeah. and have a global presence. It's kind of it's not easy, but on a rhetorical or whatever level aesthetic, it's kind of easy because they put so much of their brand into this progressive whatever image. Right. And, and so once workers and customers start, you know, calling them out, then the dominoes are falling, you know, just like with, with Israel, you know, they're starting to, people are waking up and seeing that like these companies don't give a shit. And like, and what Tarek brings up accurately is that like, and people do care. Because right. whether you like it or not, you've been conditioned to care about these companies on yeah. some level, whatever it is, whatever your company, so to speak, is. But it's like you have some kind of attachment to them. And so there's a way to mobilize people around it. Like with the Google one, you know, it blew people's minds. They were just like, what the fuck? Like I use Google all the time or I right. use Amazon, or whatever. And and like and so they, well, they had that motto. Like, I don't know if it's still there, but like back in the day, like, do no be evil. People no bring it up. Yeah. Yeah. It's and, like, yeah. Yeah, but you also realize your power with this tech stuff because it's like, oh, right, I use Apple, I use Google. It's not like some weapons manufacturer or something that takes a lot of, you know, um, thinking to really understand. It's like, oh, I have this device. Right. The company that makes this device is doing X, Y, Z in Congo and Palestine, genocide, obviously. But it's like you can make, I think, the connections and bring folks in in that way um, pretty smoothly, speaking of of all that before. So anyway, so well, yeah. and I was just going to say you were talking about, you know, people coming to the movement. Anybody that's been organizing for a while knows that when, you know, when we started or doing organizing we didn't know everything hmm. we didn't hmm. like we didn't have magically know <laughs> every historical struggle and right. every company and whatever yeah. company was doing and all these different yeah. things so it's like we have to be patient with other people that are getting involved and that's it as long as it's you know as long as it's coming from a a good place and people are right. you know discussing in good faith you need to like patiently explain different uh concepts and ideas and yep. talk about what's going on and have a back and forth but i was just going to say i wanted to you know uh, we're getting towards the end. I just wanted to I touch know. on, um, you know, your trajectory trajectory. Oh yeah. You mentioned <laughs> this already. So it's like, I want to just, touch yeah. on, you said uh libertarian Christo. Oh my God. Well, what, what, yeah, what, so, what is your, what is this background and, and yeah, how did so, you get involved in what's going on? Yeah. I was homeschooled, um, Nicholas. And, um, yeah, I, um, I was raised in, you know, an evangelical or whatever kind of a, a home. And uh, yeah, so I just had like, you know, all these bad ideas about things, you know, um, but I also was cursed with, you know, a really um, big heart or whatever you might say, <laughs> and, and a, a curious mind. And so you know, I can remember being in high school and learning about like the genocide in the Congo under King Leopold and like that being a radicalizing event and learning about like the child soldiers in Sierra Leone and that being like a radicalizing, you know, event. And, and like, there's so many, you know, examples. And obviously like, I, I do, I like the question about like what radicalized you, but I don't think that like, it should ever be that we try to like pinpoint the exact moment because right. it's absolutely it's like and good it's a process yeah well, when did you connect when did you and, start connecting with other people no no, no. Yeah, yeah 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 i'm i'm getting to that i'm just yeah, saying yeah, yeah. i just wanted to that i can like throw some little ones but yeah so like so i ended up um uh, moving out west for uh film school and um yeah and honestly it's just like i think a lot of this is about how much exposure to diversity you have growing up mm -hmm. because like i 
had the ability to travel and like I went to a multiracial school and like so much of these things are just like I think conditioning and mm. folks that are intentionally segregated from each other are generally antagonistic you know because it's easier to be because you don't have to at least play nice so to speak and and right. you know be decent to each other and build some kind of relationships but yeah so when I moved out to California I went to ultimately to UCLA and, you know, I studied under like Marxist <laughs> thinkers or people oh, that nice. use these, these tools. And, um, and like Robin Kelly in particular, um, that, uh, scholar, you know, really helped me because he said that like, you know, you shouldn't come here trying to like solve anything or bring some great like thing to bear. It's like, just like you said, look at the history of the struggle and find the people now that are still doing it and learn and like maybe you'll be part of something and maybe you'll you know that will be sort of enough and and so like yeah that kind of like really helped me and and having all that you know connection to folks and then honestly in earnest it began with the starbucks thing because i was just terminally or whatever online and the posts and i had always been a starbucks person so you know there's mm. my mechanism or whatever sure, and, sure. and so and i believed in like the mission and, and the same with apple like and you'll listen to Tark, you know who's a palestinian you know american and they'll say the same thing that like they bought into the vision and the you know idea of like it being an agent of of you know progress right. and so yeah, so it just blew my fucking mind when it was like story after story after story of like horrible conditions, people barely getting by, all this stuff. And and um, it was like, oh, OK, I guess, you know, we're not all right. Everybody's, you know, right, right here in my community, all around the world, whatever, because, again, that global nature of the brand, like I knew that that like if they were treating the workers one place, I knew that that was the exact same way that they were treating everybody else because right. they're so proud of their uniformity and, and all that. And so, like, yeah, so that kind of blew it all open for me um, because like also the fact that again, it was on social media, it was real people, you know, just pictures and whatever. And there was energy and there right. was like a smart sort of like way that they, you know, did the posts and they did the, you know, content and stuff where it was, you know, dynamic and fun. And like, I think that that's, yeah, um, been a, a through line for me is like, whether you're on the picket line or wherever, like, again, you know, like I've been saying, but like, how can we make it fun? How can we make it attractive, you know, and, and welcome folks in. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, that's a little bit of, of kind of my journey. And then like, you know, now I'm fucking spoiled because I'm working at a, you know, nonprofit that's like radical in its nature, you know, that's not only doing work or organizing, but like we had a mask off Mersk event um, with PYM, Palestinian Youth Movement, um, you know, out here in Redlands, so-called Redlands, you know, at one of the Mersk facilities. And we were helping the folks in L.A., basically send the ship away that that they were supposed to have some big you know um nice. party for or whatever some kind of eco bullshit but <laughs> uh, yeah so it's like you know i i've been on a journey i'm still on it and like i'm learning a lot and i'm just like you said i'm very aware that i don't know everything sure. in terms of revolution and and i'm just you know um trying to yeah like continue to learn and build more relationships and um yeah yeah. <laughs> well, I really appreciate it. I'm glad you're on this journey and I'm Thank glad you. for all the work that you do. And uh, I appreciate that. I'm glad that you realize that you don't know everything because <laughs> I get, I start getting, I mean, I've been doing this for a while and I definitely don't know anything. So I not know any, don't know everything. And many I'm areas, like, you know and, and, Come and, on, many are, and many specific areas, I don't know anything. <laughs> almost. And in the broad sense, there's a lot of things I still don't know. So when I meet people that seem like they know everything i get, I get concerned i don't i don't believe that and yeah, I'm exactly. like, i think you're a little that's too sure of yourself yeah <laughs> yeah well really, i'm glad you said that because that's the other piece is like we have to kind of be like all right y'all like let's calm down yep. you even have to question yourself right so yep, you yep. have to like assess your ideas and, <laughs> and talk to people that don't agree with you and yep, yep, do what they yep. have to say well i really appreciate your time and i really appreciate the chance to talk to you and uh thanks so much thank you nick <laughs> And that's our special interview. Thanks for listening. Solidarity. This has been a Socialist News and Views special interview.